from the Arts Council, social distancing, of course. As you can hear the echo in here, there's nobody else but Kelly and I. Um, this is going to be the first of a weekly series of uh, just me yakking because, of course, I know my students are missing that. Um, and I'm going to just bring you five minute little snippets about art history. So today, as you can see by the way I'm dressed, maybe you can guess, we're going to be talking about the Medici family. And I'm going to read you this wonderful history of some of the things that they commissioned, some of the artwork that they commissioned and why. So let's start. Okay. So the rise and fall of the Medici and the rise again of the Medici. So the Medici were one of the most powerful families in Florence during the 15th century. One way they justified their power was through commissions of artwork from the most famous artists of the day. They were very specific about what subjects they commissioned, using them as symbols of their right to rule Florence. They were not kings or nobles, but their art said differently. In fact, they became known as princes, although they did not have noble blood. I want to talk about one symbol that both the Medici and the symbol of Florence claimed as their own, the biblical David. Both did so for similar reasons. David was the underdog going up against the giant Goliath. The Medici and the city of Florence itself embraced the symbol, the appearance that you are weak when you are actually very powerful. The first sculpture of David was commissioned by the Medici from Donatello. Around 1460, but the exact date is unknown. It is first mentioned in a document from 1469 in a description of the wedding festival of Piero de' Medici. This version of David is childlike in keeping with the biblical description of David as being a boy. However, he is nude, which demonstrates the classical influence of the early Renaissance. The Medici intended this statue as a private symbol, appropriating it for their family rather than the city of Florence, and it was placed in the Medici Palace. The second commission of, of a statue of David occurred between 1473 and 1475 from Verrocchio. As a sign of good faith to the city, the Medici sold it to the Signoria, which was the governing body of the city. Now most of you know, the member of the Medici family who used art as propaganda to its utmost was Lorenzo the Magnificent. And the reason he was so magnificent was because of his patronage of the arts, intellect, and his political savvy. Lorenzo's father, Piero, died in 1469 when Lorenzo was only 20 and he then became the head of the family. In 1478, there was an attempt on his life by the rival Pazzi family and Pope Sixtus IV. While he and his brother Giuliani were at mass at the Cathedral of Florence, Giuliani was killed, 27 knife wounds, and Lorenzo was gravely wounded. The assailants were captured and either killed or exiled. One fled to Constantinople, but was extradited to Florence. He was hanged from a window in the Palazzo della Signoria. This was known as the Pazzi Conspiracy. And Lorenzo, as you may guess, was never challenged again. The Medici's reign of Florence throughout most of the 15th century would come to an end in 1494. Lorenzo the Magnificent had died two years prior, leaving his son, Piero the Unfortunate, in charge. Piero and the rest of the family were run out of Florence by its citizens in 1494 because of political flip-flopping. While Piero was in exile, a radical Dominican monk named Savonarola took control of the city. He was very popular with the people and in 1491 became prior of San Marco, the church and monastery supported by the Medici. In 1497 and 1498, he organized the Bonfire of the Vanities in the Piazza della Signoria, Luxury objects, manuscripts, and paintings were all burned. Savonarola's sermon became more and more political. He was excommunicated in 1497, which he ignored, putting he and Florence in danger. The Florentine Republic decided to act, act against this renegade friar. They hauled him out of San Marco, tortured him, tried him, hung him and two companions until they were nearly dead, and then burned them in the Piazza della Signoria. 
His ashes were thrown into the Arno so that his followers would have no relics to honor. Florence therefore rebelled against tyranny twice at the end of the 15th century. First time exiling the Medici, and the second with the death of Savonarola. By doing so, Florence remained a republic. In order to rebuild the image of the republic, the Signoria commissioned several projects. They also acquired work belonging to the Medici to cut the bonds between the family and the city. One was David's Donatello, which was removed from the Medici Palace and placed in the Palazzo della Signoria to join with its earliest, earlier marble version. Verrocchio's David had been sold to the Signoria in 1476 by Lorenzo and Giuliano de Medici. These gestures were just the beginning, however. The statues began to, I'm sorry, the state began to commission new works as well. One of the most important was the commission from Michelangelo of, uh, guess what, David. Originally made for the north apse of the Cathedral of Florence, it took four days to roll it from, from Michelangelo, Michelangelo's workshop, having that trouble, sorry, <laughs> Michelangelo's workshop to the cathedral. The monumental quality aligns it with the great statues from Greece and Rome. Also align Florence with the great past, the great, great civilizations of the past. But the Medici were not through yet. They regained power when Giovanni de' Medici became Pope in 1513, and the two uh, and two other family members married into the very powerful French monarchy. These events established the Medici within the Church and within the powerful French monarchy. A new form of artistic expression was needed for this new Florentine court culture. One of the first major commissions was one to replace Donatello's bronze sculpture of David with a new David from the Medici Palace. The figure of David had become a strong symbol for the Republic, so the Medici needed a new champion. They instead commissioned Bandinelli to sculpt Orpheus for the palace courtyard. Leo X was fond of music, and Orpheus was known for his lyre playing. He, was also, he also descended into the underworld and returned. This was a metaphor for the return of the Medici. So, like the phoenix, phoenix rising from the ashes, the Medici regained power and once again used art to justify their claims. The end.